How many times have you heard these phrases? Change is the only constant. Is it too late to change? If only I could, I'd really want to change this. In this channel, you don't have to wonder. We are going to interview people who really make a difference to this world. Let their stories inspire and empower you to create the change you want to see. Who knows, you could be the next change maker. Welcome to the Change Makers. Hi, I'm Sakala. And I'm Leo. And welcome to the Change Makers. So yeah. today's guest, she's beautiful, she's intelligent, she's talented, and she has a fabulous message for all of us. And mm -hmm. she is, okay, but enough about me saying things about her. Let us say it in her own words. Hi, Atreya Basu. Welcome to the show. Welcome, thank welcome. you so much, uh, Sakala and Leo. It's my pleasure being here, and thank you for the invitation. And thanks for the lovely introduction. <laughs> <laughs> as lovely as you. Yes. So yeah. tell us a little bit about your brand. So, hi, Matre. And uh, I'm here in Qatar for the last uh, 13 years around. So mm. in 2010, I packed my bags, joined my husband in Qatar, okay. left my job in Times of India <laughs> and came to Qatar. So, yeah, so now uh, I'll go back, you know, what I do, I used to do when I came back to Qatar because I'm a marketing and communication professional throughout my career. And the last 10, 11 years, I have been working in a lot of organizations here in Qatar, like Qatar Rail, managing mm -hmm. their corporate communications department. I have worked for a subsidiary company of Qatar Airways, Ali Bin Ali and all. But, you know, when I was working, I felt that, okay, marketing and communication is my passion. That is what my okay. education is all about. Yeah, yeah. But somewhere inside me, I always felt that I want to do something, you know, which actually serves the larger community, mm -hmm. which comes with a purpose. Yeah. And that I can do only through entrepreneurship. Oh, wow. And there was always this bug, uh, you know, <laughs> to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. And what exactly? I didn't want to do anything. Like, you know, just grab an idea and start mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. No, it was not that. Yeah. So what exactly should I have done? But which could have actually, you know, made some kind of impact. Mm -hmm. And that is where exactly it started. Since I was in the communications team, mm -hmm. we used to have, as you know, that all the events, all the gifting solutions and mm -hmm. all those things comes from the communication team of every organization right and we were the one who was working closely with the agencies thinking about every season every gifting season what we should be giving to our employees mm -hmm. to our customers mm -hmm. um, internally externally you know and that is where exactly I felt there was a gap in the market yeah. Because we have so many gifting seasons right now. If you start off with the regular, you know, the, the ones which are confirmed, like sports day, we talk of Ramadan, mm -hmm. we talk mm -hmm. of Eid, we talk of national day, Garingao. Yeah. And beside yeah. that, there are other, you know, events which pop up uh, and the exhibitions. So the kind of gifts that we were being proposed in the market, I feel most of them, most of them, if you evaluate them properly, did have some kind of plastic content mm -hmm. right okay. yeah. and i felt that you know when we were giving those gifts or when i was receiving those gifts myself uh what was i exactly mm -hmm. doing with those gifts do was i connecting with those gifts you know was i really yeah. Yeah. feeling that okay I, you know i really need to go back take these gifts back home and i want to use them so most of the time it was not happening mm, 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 because mm, maybe mm. the gifts that we were being proposed as a company by the suppliers were not proposed thinking who the gift recipients were or exactly. what is the objective of the event or mm. the exhibition right mm. and what will be the after effect mm -hmm. of that event what is what exactly will be okay. the outcome right as an organization as a corporate we need to think you know this much we have spent what is the outcome? It's not just giving it and finishing it off, right? Okay. So most of the time, I felt that, you know, we were taking it back home. I was keeping it somewhere, in some dark corner or in some <laughs> cupboard. <laughs> or giving it away to someone, asking, hey, do you need this t-shirt? Do you need this cap? I've got this plastic bottle, you know, do you want yeah. it? Uh, I, because I don't, I'm not going to use it. So this is what exactly what was happening. If, and if I'm giving it to someone, maybe they are using it or maybe they will not be using it. And for my case, yeah, it's, it's getting stuck in some corner 
or mm. maybe I will throw it away. And what yeah. will happen? Ultimately, it will end up in the landfill as a waste. So, corporates, if you think the broader picture, what are what exactly we are contributing? We are contributing mm. waste to landfill, right? We are spending so much of money procuring gifts which are not impactful, which are not thought of, you know, which are not exactly uh, procured thinking who the audiences are mm. and you know what kind of impact it will be creating for our brand and also for the environment and also yeah. to the people will they remember those gifts mm. taking back those gifts will i feel say, yeah you know like i have got this gift and i want to remember yeah and i want to go and show everyone exactly. i got yes. this thing exactly. you know and i connect yeah. with this thing i'm feeling so happy from yes, inside yes, 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 yes. Uh, that is what was missing yeah. right yeah. so we were spending money we were cre- generating waste and we are mm. creating plastic pollution to an extent yes, yes, yes. which is not at all sustainable okay. which is not what we yeah. are you know mm-hmm. how we are helping the environment yeah. that is exactly when the idea of okay. my company was born so we are verdura here we are an impactful gifting solution provider mm. in qatar and when i say impactful gifting i mean that gifts that will make you happy so mm-hmm. we provide solutions through our gifting uh, you know gifting products through our bouquet of products or solutions we have we talk to the corporates we try to find out you know what exactly their event mm-hmm. is all about what are who the recipients mm-hmm. gift recipients are and based on that we provide them solutions like ideas you know through our bouquet of products that okay you know this is your audience and these are the things that you can give them as a you know hamper mm-hmm. for this particular event the most beautiful thing is that most of our products are waste free mm-hmm. uh, they are biodegradable and environment friendly when i say environment friendly uh, we make sure that there is no green washing happening here excellent because i myself is also certified in sustainability and circular economy so okay. that is before when i started mm. off my company i thought that okay i need to educate myself before okay. beside Absolutely. my you know marketing education yes. degree i yes. need to know very closely about the subject mm. yeah so which leads me to this yes. question because uh, listening to you talk about uh, your company yeah. how you uh, saw the gap in the market mm. and how you were able to step in mm-hmm. and provide the service that the market needs i think there's something deep inside you that really inspires what you do so before the business model before the business idea uh, there was an advocacy inside of you you know what inspired that advocacy before you actually got into that business as i said you know i from my childhood you know mm-hmm. i have grown up in a family where i've okay. seen i've been very close to nature mm-hmm. we had a, our own kitchen garden you know i've okay. seen my mother i've and i have traveled the whole of india because my father was changing his jobs mm-hmm. and we were in mm-hmm. rajasthan we were in haryana different states we moved okay. around different states okay. You know, I have seen, you know, being very close to the nature, growing our own vegetables, having it at home, cooking it. And okay. I felt that, okay, this creates a different kind of, you know, the taste immensely varies. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely mm-hmm. delicious and it's a different kind of, a, you know, experience. And when it's you, really farm to table. Yeah, 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 when you do that. Beside that, I'm also an animal lover. You know, my mm-hmm. grandmother at home, she used to have so many five, six cats and each cat mm-hmm. had a different name. <laughs> There were so many dogs. Uh, we'll share an example with you. Once what happened, you know, there was like mom, my mom, th- those days we didn't have those, you know, telephone. Mm. So my, uh, we went to my grandmom's place and uh, there was a lot of chaos happening. Was, there was a, the house was quite big and there were a lot of people. So they have a huge garden outside. So what happened? There was an eagle, I think a vulture or an eagle. Wow. Mm. The, its wing got cut with the thread of kite kites yeah yeah Very somehow mm. so it fell on you know uh, in our garden my grandmother you know because people were saying oh no 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 don't touch it and you know, all this stuff but she she went she picked it up and she started dressing it because mm. those days you know going to the vet and all was also not very common and so she started dressing it with detol and whatever she could do with cotton and all and she said no you know she this one is injured i need to somehow see that the wings recover and can fly so that 
eagle was mm. in our house <laughs> for at least 2 3 days till it recovered and once wow. when it recovered it flew on its own flew back on its own you know so that is was is was in the family you know mm. to be close mm. to mm. nature mm. to mm. care for uh, you know other living objects and also to see that you know we do not harm by do what i am doing the way of my living doesn't some way harm the nature so that is as i said it it was from the childhood mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's when you know that actually um, ignited the passion to do something around yeah. it to reduce waste to do yeah. something around the environment this is really inspiring because usually we we know of businesses that are successful in this field uh, but then the the sustainability factor will come in later when they have the profit but yours is actually different you have that in you uh in your background in your family and then you decided to create a business out of that which is actually what we need which is why you are here in the change maker series because we're looking for people who are into business but at the back of their mind they really have this one objective which is to become the change that the, you know the world needs yeah yeah so so uh the question everybody on everybody's mind and especially mine is what is word care what is it all about So by the name when you hear the name word your our brand name uh-huh. what exactly what thought comes to your mind durability okay care is of course there mm-hmm. care. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. but uh, the first thing that comes to mind is durability what about you sagala so very durable care very durable care okay that's wonderful actually uh, because what makes me happy as the founder as you know as an entrepreneur is that my brand is getting mm-hmm. related to the word durability which means you have already after hearing my brand name you know that you know we will provide you with the service mm-hmm. that will be durable which mm-hmm. you can trust right yeah. so having said that i'll just come back to what verdura means verdura is actually a spanish word Ooh. uh yeah so verdura in the in the common language it actually would be if you ask in spanish they will say you know it's it's something to do with vegetables but yeah vegetables again is greenery it's leafy vegetables and all but mm-hmm. in the actual sense of the word mm-hmm. um we will say that verdura is all about greenery so that is what exactly what our brand stands for okay. verdura kia is all about greenery sustainability and renewability caring for the greenery yeah. caring, caring for, for the environment yes for the environment yes <laughs> caring about that's that's okay i i learned a new word <laughs> verdura verdura care in spanish yeah. for yeah. caring for the greenery flora and fauna yeah mm. it's all about like greenery verdura verdura yeah. Yeah. obviously i'm married you're married mm. he's married he's got kids but every question i ask every woman who generally has mm. this mm. is how do you get the work life balance and is your husband one of those people mm. who takes on equal responsibility Absolutely you know like I have reached here I can do what I want I left my you know very flourishing corporate career and became an entrepreneur it's because of him you know because had I not got his support mm-hmm. in everything I wouldn't have reached this you know place so I should give him that Uh, you know appreciation that he sh- should be getting uh, maybe i'm not being able to convey that to him every day but yeah this is a very good platform to say thank you to my husband <laughs> for being all husbands yeah, yeah. for being and your wife <laughs> yeah for being so accommodating for being so yeah. understanding and you know mm-hmm. for uh for being one of those men you know who believes in okay you are doing good so i'm happy he keeps and he's one of those mm. guys he keeps telling me i feel so proud you know when <laughs> even if i do small small things somewhere something has come out mm. you know my business is doing something uh, he will come back home and he will say you know i feel felt so proud of because of you so that that mm. actually, mm. actually gives me that you know kind of encouragement so he's yeah. fantastic he with is absolutely mm. absolutely it's mm. all about his support uh, that actually keeps me pushing and you know and uh, there are times when i i'm not being able to give maybe a lot of time to the household work or yeah. you know things around the home uh, because of the nature of my work because there's so much of pressure there's so much things we need to do as an entrepreneur uh but yeah he is understanding he will never say like you know even uh at home he's like whatever we have we will eat you know like uh, do you don't need to cook you know even in the if the cook is not coming he's like no 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 i will order something you do your work so those small small things you know are is something which adds up that mm. you would think that okay i don't need to worry about all those things you know he's taking care of exactly uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah it all boils down to 
uh, this thought, this concept that says you are a, an exact reflection of your partner. Whatever mm. success one partner has, it has to do with the kind of support you get from, from, from your partner. Absolutely. So, so, so there is this I saying, agree. right, that uh, behind every successful man, there is a woman. But I would say that behind every successful woman, there is a very, man. very understanding man. Exactly. Yeah. And many of them. Yeah, many yes, of them. Yes, exactly. Because I had a fantastic father and a fantastic mm. husband. Same, so, yeah, same, so yeah. Me, it's, you know, it's, yeah. A, it's an ecosystem. Absolutely. You know, of, of men. Now, let me ask uh, Atri again. If I decided to use Ventura Care for my company, what's the thought process? How do you suggest the products? What products do you actually suggest? Yeah. So, Leo, as I said, mm -hmm. that uh, we work in a very different model. Okay. Uh, that's what makes us stand out mm -hmm. in the market. Mm -hmm. That's why I say we are very different. We are not okay. your regular you know, gifting, uh, yes. gifts provider okay. or supplier. I will not show you any products. If you come and tell me that, Atri, wow. you know, you, uh, what products you use. Because okay. I don't know you, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know who, what your event is all about, what your mm. occasion is all about, mm. who you will be giving those yes. gifts, right? Yes. So I need to, as a supplier also, I mm. need to make sure that you as a corporate, you as an organization, after you have given those, you know, products to someone, you have a very good feedback. You have an impact. You have created an impact mm -hmm. in every aspect, yeah. not only on the environmental side, in every aspect, you know, even the happiness quotient, you know, uh, the person who has received the gift will mm. remember those gifts yeah. and remember yeah, you sure. and your occasion. Mm. So that is where exactly we come in with our expertise. We will, I'll ask you, you know, Leo, what is your occasion all about? You know, what, what exactly okay. is your brand all about? I'll do a little, we'll do a little bit of research mm -hmm. on what your brand is all about. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we'll ask you, what what is the occasion? What is the event? You will tell me, okay, you know, this is for maybe such and such things we are organizing. Mm. Then who is the gift recipient? It could mm. be your customers, right? It could be your premium customers. It could be your okay. regular retail customers. Mm -hmm. It could be, you know, your corporate partners. Mm. It could be your investors. It could be your own, you know, management. Or it could be the, you know, the some dignitaries. So every person's, you know, the person, the personality mm -hmm. is different. Every yeah. gift recipient's requirements are different. Mm -hmm. Likes are different. Mm -hmm. So based on that, when you say, okay, you know, actually this is maybe for we are preparing a VIP hamper mm -hmm. from our from our company yeah. to all our, you know, corporate partners. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, now I've understood your target audience. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the, uh, the project that that you are most proud of uh, to date? about my company you know when mm. i started this off uh, i would also like to mention uh, dr latifa darvish's name because she is my partner mm. and mm. she is also a huge support to our brand and to me uh, because she herself is also involved in a lot of women entrepreneurship activities okay. she's very very uh, thoughtful and very very you know uh, pro about sustainability herself and that is what made us click you know to work together mm. Mm, uh, so yeah, uh, coming back to your question, project that is you know that has made you proud. Yeah, today. what made me proud is of course as I said, uh, my company. You know, when we formed this company, when we the brand itself, it's 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 a project, right? Yeah. Till date, the kind of impact that we have creating through mm -hmm. created through our products. If you call about carbon offset, mm -hmm. the product through our products, the amount of carbon that we have offset it, or through the tree plantation project, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. last year we launched. The tree plantation project, which we call, you know, a million tree more yeah. and a greener cutter, mm, right? Which is and, yeah, which is absolutely something very, very unique and different. It's kind of, you know, a gifting solution and uh, which is combined with technology. Mm -hmm. And okay. at the same time, you know, a cause, a cause yeah. related thing. So we have gotten a huge, you know, with the world's first blockchain enabled tree planting platform. Okay. Wow. They are our exclusive partner here. Tech and environment. Absolutely. We are combining, this is the first That's time, nice. you know, we are combining technology with sustainability and environment Absolutely. and gifting solutions. Fantastic. So that is the future, right? Mm. Technology mm. is the future. Mm. So we have a impanel farm, our partner farm here is Hinyat Salma. Okay. who are doing who the are best a, yeah one of the best farms yeah. here yeah. so what we are doing we are helping corporates to plant indigenous trees here in Qatar and also they can plant nice. it globally nice. but most importantly in Qatar Correct. why indigenous trees because that is where I feel very proud of uh, you know the different kind of activities or projects that we are doing we, uh, you know revolving around gifting Correct. whether it's our products which is helping corporates you know reduce plastic waste plastic mm. pollution mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
if you see the numbers the amount of plastic bottle that could have gone yeah. in the environment which we have saved by working with those corporates especially i will say those corporates who yes. worked with us have actually done those impact right mm. it's huge the amount of carbon has been offset it mm -hmm. is actually huge oh. and even to the tree plantation you know we are planting indigenous saplings indigenous trees which helps the biodiversity in the mm. country you know mm -hmm. which helps combat desertification which is so so important to you know fight against climate change yeah. the country right now you know the government the country is promoting uh, the country is talking about and actively participating and telling people that you know we are fighting for climate change yeah. and mm. there are so many activities the country is doing mm. uh, yeah. which is absolutely yeah. great if you see the last few uh, events that has happened hap mm. that mm. has happened here mm. yeah. uh, where people are getting educated how to combat desertification you mm. know how exactly we can protect the biodiversity the fall the fauna and flora like right yes. the yes, the the trees the indigenous saplings yes. mm. uh, the mm. trees which is sidra which is summer yeah. Yeah. why yeah. sidra trees so we are doing that you know mm. we are planting this kind of trees mm. uh, and helping the corporates are doing that with us mm. and we are connecting it with technology so mm. the beauty is that they can go to the farm see the trees they can even sit in their office and see the trees they have planted nice, so nice. they can log in they can just you know see that okay i have planted maybe 1000 trees 10000 trees whatever yeah. they yeah. can see those trees in their dashboard click on it mm. and it will actually take them through satellite mapping to the exact location of the tree oh, wow. yeah wow. so they can see okay this is my you know this is the tree i have planted That's the best nice. part is that they can name those trees virtually and even gift it to their employees wow. as tree certificates as in their emails Absolutely. and all and they do have an inbuilt sustainability tracker there as well mm -hmm. so for our products what happen when we you know work with any corporates we after every project i make sure that is again something which makes us stand out in the market mm -hmm. uh, yeah. we make sure to provide them with an impact report absolutely yeah, yeah. that okay mm -hmm. you bought maybe you have replaced your plastic bottles with this numbers of my you know uh, tumblers which mm -hmm. are made from biodegradable materials mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. thing okay but what is the impact they need to know that yeah, to yeah. show Urban people through and, data yeah. what is the impact mm. they have created right that is that we provide and mm. as i said we have that expertise because you know when i started off i made sure that i do get the certifications absolutely. in that mm. so what mm. i'm talking mm. i know that it is valid so it's not greenwashing it's absolutely, absolutely not that is what we are protecting yeah. everyone from that you know uh, if someone someone comes and gives you a pen and say okay you, you know it's eco friendly the word is sometimes very loosely used mm, you know <laughs> eco friendly sustainability sustainability yeah. is a huge term yes, right exactly. so many aspects yeah. are involved <laughs> into yeah. making a product sustainable yeah. actually yeah. speaking of this yeah. uh, is, is there like a regulation that uh, certifies those products that you cannot just put slap a sticker that says it's sustainable so we should be working on that absolutely yeah. so yes so for the from the product perspective mm. yes most of our products that say they are sustainable do have the certifications absolutely. yes yeah. Yeah. and beside that also as i said sustainability uh, involves so many aspects mm -hmm. in a product's entire life cycle so yeah. to make tell that this product has is sustainable you also need to be very very you know transparent in saying what are the aspects of sustainability the product is achieving Fantastic. in its entire life cycle what mm -hmm. is what is happening in the entire supply chain you know mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. what the product is made of raw materials okay. most most important yeah. where it is made yes. you know <laughs> yeah. the factory conditions yes. Yes. where it has been so made the workers yeah. conditions yeah. as well yes. absolutely are the mm -hmm. workers Salaries. properly paid yeah. mm -hmm. uh, you know so those you know the factory conditions of course the factories that we work with we make sure that they have those kind of certifications okay. they provide us with those Perfect. and the where it is being sourced from how much carbon you know footprint exactly. do you have and you have a footprint if you are bringing it from some you know some if your factory is located outside or uh, if even if it's here what are you doing to offset that footprint yeah. Yeah. right mm. and then once it is here when people are using it what is the afterlife mm. uh, which is very important you know which people yes. don't think yes. about yes. they're thinking about only those few aspects before the product reaches mm. you right yeah. then you say okay i have used a sustainable product and it's gone yeah. Yeah. what is the afterlife that is very very important in yes. how many years how many months or how many days will the product de degrade right mm. Mm. and that is where we we come with our expertise so if you ask me today you know atri this product can you tell me because i want to put it in my annual report you mm. know we want to show the data actual yeah. data what Absolutely. we have done as a corporate mm. because you your investors can come and ask you 
your yes. uh, partners can come and ask you know you are putting it whatever is what where the data has been mm-hmm. validated from so we can say okay you know this much you know amount of plastic uh, because this product will be degrading in such number of months yes, yes. in this Correct. number of years Correct. and yeah every product is not recyclable so you cannot put it in a bin and say that you know in every bin every product and say that okay it will get recycled no mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. every recycling unit that is here even qatar has highly developed recycling units yes. recycling companies mm. so they will guide you as a corporate you know like t- with different bins correct right mm. where to put which product yes I so know. Mm. most of them don't follow it but exactly yeah. so <laughs> it's easier for them yeah. Yeah. to actually you know recycle it mm. uh, and uh, and no like you know instead of yeah. getting into those things where we do not know where to put yes. what now all companies have their targets i'm assuming the profit is there but yours is unique because aside from targeting profit and growth and everything i'm sure you have a target in terms of the kind of carbon footprint uh that you should help the no environment cut down yeah. you know how far along are you from achieving that target or how close are you from achieving that so uh, just to answer your question leo like uh, when we talk about profits you know the beauty of the uh, following a sustainable model mm-hmm. or sustain walking in the path of sustainability is that in the long term yeah. a company definitely becomes highly profitable if they are following those footsteps mm. which many organization do not realize in the beginning yeah. they say okay you know it might be an expense or it will you know get into eat into our budget mm. or no but in the long run if you see statistically mm. and even if you see the you know the financial model mm. Mm. it will reap profit not only on the brand aspect but actually in reality mm. of course we do have a target you know our objective is that we are working towards uh, un goal uh, united nations sustainability goal 13 12 13 14 which is uh, wow. climate change mm. responsible consumption and production mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. life on land and life under water Wow. these are the four pillars these are the four sdg goals that mm. we are focused on mm. uh during our you know in every aspect in every work that we are doing where can you get this report yeah yeah we can share it with you so we have the impact report as i said in in house also we calculate the impact that we have done till date mm-hmm. so of course akala and you'll share the n- numbers with you so which yes. will actually amaze you the kind of carbon that we have offset it till now uh the amount of plastic bottles actually you know mm-hmm. we have saved from mm-hmm. going to the landfill i would not say I take all the credit by saying we but the corporates you know the corporates who are working they have done it you know yeah. they have saved so much amount of plastic going to the landfill they are the mm. one who have offset so much amount of carbon wow. uh just to give you a rough number around 300 more than 300000 kgs of carbon we have offset it only through you know a certain line of uh, service that we provide mm-hmm. so of mm-hmm. course mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. i i'm sure your viewers will be very interested yeah. to yeah. know that so talking about sustainability you know uh, the biggest example in front of our eyes is the uh, fifa world cup which Absolutely. we all experienced you know yes. it, it was all about sustainability it was the first world cup in the history of fifa oh. which covered so many aspects of sustainable or it's the, one of the most sustainable you know uh, world cup And that we event. yeah what an event we had so uh, if you can talk about the stadiums you know yeah. 974 especially we all love yeah. being there watching matches yeah, yeah and uh, uh those are made of containers you know i i had one of my friend coming down from india and he was there and he said what a lovely stadium and yes. i had to tell him and he mentioned it in his um social media so i had to men- tell him i had to inform him that you know you were, were there in the stadium the stadium is made of shipping containers yes. and all those containers will be recycled and repurposed yes so that is what you know the country is doing you know so it created such a, it has set such a big example for everyone mm. in the region mm. uh for everyone in the world that mm. even such a you know a tournament of such huge capacity yes can follow the every aspect of sustainability so it's not only the environment side if you see the uh the matches were so much convenient for people with who are specially able yeah absolutely mm. right so they had a certain uh, amount of kindness absolutely so <laughs> that is what sustainability is all about it yeah. it covers environmental factors it covers social aspects it's it's covered the human aspects mm-hmm. every absolutely. pillars are you know mm. looked after yeah. <clears throat> and i felt that uh, people i saw people i heard people saying that you know we have not been uh, we have not got so much 
access to the stadium so properly in other in other matches in, yes. uh, in other tournaments or other world cups the way we had it here because yes. there were buses there were taxis for the specially able uh, they were uh, you know they had specially uh, designed rooms from Absolutely. where you know people with, who are hearing uh, who are impaired like yeah. they can go and watch those matches yes. so this is all about sustainability so th- i would say i'm very proud that i could you know experience uh, such a tournament and can which is so so much pro sustainability mm. and i yes. could uh, feel so much connected to what i do and what has been done it Absolutely. sets a huge yeah. example yeah. Yeah. now when it comes to the private entities the smaller companies mm. uh, what do you think is the level of adoption that uh, we are seeing now in the region and what can be done towards uh, you know expanding that adoption of the sustainability i would say it's the um, the awareness is growing mm-hmm. currently yeah. because there are so many initiatives that is being taken in the country yeah. and yeah. also in the region mm-hmm. around sustainability the country itself is becoming a big example yeah so absolutely the smaller so the, companies should follow yes yeah. so if you, even if you see the event that was done by qatar foundation last mm-hmm. week uh, earthna summit mm-hmm. it was all about you know uh, climate change yes. it was all about desertification yeah. talking about Uh, making people aware how it can badly adversely impact us and what we mm. as an individual can do and beside that you know what i feel why i started with corporate gifting uh, why i entered into this because i feel that you and i as individuals cannot bring that impact even yeah. if we do yeah. corporates can bring huge impact yes. why Financial. because they can impact the life of so many people they have yes. so many employees yeah. right so if they as a brand or they as an organization mm-hmm. is implementing something or doing something yeah. they are impacting the life of so many employees and they it will be kind of a ripple effect right so they those employees are going into their circle mm. and sharing those things right yes. those stories and encouraging other people yes. so that is how impact will be created and it mm. has to come from the larger organizations and the you know the small and medium organization and how the adaptability is yes lot of multinationals who have you know their offices here are very pro sustainability of course they approach sometimes they approach us uh and even when we approach them they are they know what they want right, right? Mm-hmm. because they have to show it in their annual reports the larger organization of course they also need to show there are so many you know if you talk about the big names here you see a lot of sustainability oriented work they are doing because they show it in their annual reports csr they, csr they are yeah. doing uh they are doing a lot of you know they are cutting down on uh, on plastics i know an organization mm-hmm. here a huge organization who have completely removed plastic bottles from their office wow. so if you walk into their office you will never find a single plastic bottle and it is a huge organization here and they have implemented so many other initiatives internally also for their employees you know mm. to encourage them not to you know print papers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, for which they might be uh, fined mm-hmm. if they, in a in a in a nicer fun way mm-hmm. and uh, yeah so cut down on printing papers how it can adversely affect the environment mm-hmm. and them actually you know yes, uh, yes, cut down yes. on having plastic bottles you yeah. know cut down on having you know those uh, small mm-hmm. small things you know when yeah. yes even the single email uh, signature maybe yeah, that no. reminds them to not print yes. it it has yes. an impact at the because, end because you know right? as i said uh, as sustainability when we dig deeper and mm-hmm. we get into the subject it's, a, it's it's it it might get difficult for people to understand so yeah. we have to make it very simple mm-hmm. with starting with small small things small so small people things. understand okay you know what a huge word it is mm-hmm. no I, okay oh, i this is if i remove this you know i stop drinking from this plastic bottle or stop using this plastic cutlery all that simple thing a plastic straw yeah. Yeah. this is how it going to impact my future generations yes. you know or maybe i this plastic will end up in the sea mm-hmm. yes. pollute the sea mm-hmm. then i am going and to have those dolphin. yeah and and i am going to have those sea f- seafood mm-hmm. those seafood are actually and those seafood is actually having sea, sea animals or sea fishes are actually having those plastics mm. ultimately it is end up inside ending up inside me right yeah, yeah. so it's an yeah. entire ecosystem right so we have to be being sustainable it doesn't mean you know using jargons and yes. such huge words um but yeah as a on from a common perspective common man's perspective it should be uh, you know okay i should need to live a life that is how what corporates need to make them understand i need i need to lead, uh, live a life which will not adversely affect my future generation and also all the you know uh, the living uh, being or the living objects <laughs> around me so as we obviously i'm going to ask you the most important question you're talking about sustainability and your products who's your sustainable champion 
Sakala, you know, the person or the company which inspires me most by the kind of work, how they started and by the kind of work they are doing mm. is Patagonia. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's an international name. And if you think of Patagonia, the first thing, more than their clothing, the first thing that will come to your mind is, you know, oh, Patagonia, that company, you know, which is creating, fighting for climate change. Mm. Mm. You know, they are the one who's doing that. So you immediately connect the brand with the cause. Mm. And that is what inspires me so much with how, you know, the founder has built the organization. Last mm. year, he has even uh, committed his percentage of the company for climate action, for a mm. trust, Amazing. which is which is absolutely huge. Uh, yeah. He started yeah. this, uh, you know, this initiative, One Person for the Planet, mm. which organizations can even join mm. and contribute a percentage of their profit mm. for the, to fight against climate change. Yeah. So, yeah, so Patagonia is a brand which inspires me a lot. I read about their story. I read about their case studies. I see how he has built the brand. Uh, but despite making it a profitable brand, how he has, you know, he has not moved away from the cause, yes. mm. which mm. is uh, actually making the brand what it is today. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Because I follow Lydia Firth, mm. Colin Firth's wife, mm. and she's always talking about environmental and mm. she's trying to, you know, whenever she orders mm. a dress, she wants to make sure that the companies don't send it with a plastic wrapping and mm. little by little. Yeah. And, and I mean, her husband is so big in the industry mm. and she has decided to be not fake. Yeah. You know, and she doesn't mind wearing to the BAFTAs or whatever mm. they go called mm. a recycled dress or an upcycle dress. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is the fun bit. I'm already, you know, rubbing my hands in glee <laughs> because this is generally when we put everybody in, you know, toes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely <laughs> oh on their toes. They have so we have a section called the rapid fire, uh -huh. and it's a one word answer. Mm -hmm. So you can't think and we're not going to turn around and tell you the questions okay. ahead of time. So here, here goes. Mm -hmm. First question, Leo. Flora or fauna? Both actually for me. Both. Yes, both yeah. are important. Oh, excellent. Second one, obviously sustainability. Are you vegetarian? I'm trying to be, but oh. now no. Okay. Yes. So you're not vegetarian? Yes, That's I am. Terrible. I think you wanna, I'm trying, you I'm wanna. trying, I'm trying to be. <laughs> it's a difficult task, yeah. but yes, of course, I'm trying. Cotton or hemp? For me, hemp. Yeah, yeah a lot of people prefer Absolutely, it to yes. I, I, I still haven't, haven't understood why, but... The amount of water that yeah. is being used to cultivate the crop mm. and uh, hemp is completely, completely biodegradable and very, very healthy and safe for the environment. Mm. Yeah. Also, the cultivation process, which makes it very sustainable. Yeah. Recycling or upcycling? Both. Both are good for, you know, environment and, but it depends on what the product is. Mm. So we are thinking yeah, of recycling yeah, or yeah, upcycling. Yeah. So both is important for me. Okay. Yeah. I want, uh, this will take more words to answer, oh. but I want you to do an elevator pitch to someone who's not into sustainability yet. And if you're in front of him, how do you convince him with a in your time starts 30 now, second in 30 elevator seconds. pitch? So, hi everyone. Now, what is Vardura Care? Vardura Care is your impactful gifting solution provider. Uh, we bring happiness in the faces of your gift recipients. How we do it? We are combining gifting solution with technology, which is the very, very first time in Qatar. And we are making all the gifts that you are giving to your recipients during events, exhibitions, very, very impactful. So that is all, all about Vardura Care. If you want to know more, Please reach out to me. I'm Atri Basu, the founder of and CEO of Vardura Kya. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Obviously, I'm gonna, I'm, we're going to round wrap up, but mm. this last question mm. we ask everybody. Yeah. How do you want to change the world? So how do I want to change the world? Uh, I would say I am already in that journey mm. with my company mm. Vardura Kya. For 10 years down the line, when somebody will associate the name of my company mm. with, you know, impact that has been generated in the society whether it's waste to landfill that has been reduced whether it's plastic pollution that has been reduced whether the social impact that has been created whether it's carbon offset mm. that has been done as an action towards you know uh, climate change uh, mm. with yeah. our tree plantation so when all this thing will get associated with our brand name and people mm. will say okay Vardura Care is here in Qatar mm. yeah. they are with in collaboration with all the corporates here is creating this huge impact for the country mm. fighting climate change helping the biodiversity protecting desertification protecting mm. you know uh, waste to landfill that is what exactly you know my goal is and that is what I want to achieve fantastic. through my organization fantastic nice. thank you very much Astri. 
Yeah. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, and Leon, we really enjoyed it, right? Yes, same yes, here, yes. same this here. This is I one of the uh, most inspiring uh, talks we've ever had. Ever in the had. Show. Yes, exactly. And it, it keeps me, you know, inspired to do the things that we've talked about, you know, to, to become part of the solution in yes. terms of sustainability. I'm really happy that uh, yes. I could inspire you, Leo, to move away from any kind of yeah, yeah. things which are not environment friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Yes. So That's where can they follow you? Uh, if you can just uh, share. So you can visit our website, which mm -hmm. is myverduracare.com. Uh, you can even reach out to us at care at myverdurakir.com and our phone number is also mentioned on our website. Okay. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, which is in the same name, Verdurakir, LinkedIn, Facebook. And you can get us also, so this will be available on Spotify, on Instagram and on a couple of other OTT platforms. Mm -hmm. And your you, channel as well? Yes, and my channel as well. My YouTube channel, which is Sakala's Life. And my YouTube, my Instagram channel, which is Sakala's Life. Thank you, Leo. And what yep. is your channel? Uh, it's BTS, not the famous Korean boy band. <laughs> it's behind the success. Uh, you can uh, look me up by uh, using the hashtag BT Success Stories. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. yes, thank absolutely. you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and thank you for tuning in. Thank you so much. <laughs>